Peace and blessings. This is Lisa Marie Goodson of the Blackberry Beauty Transformative Academy, Ancient African Wisdom for the Modern Sister. So yes, I'm coming from my favorite room in the house. It's the kitchen because a lot of magic goes on in the kitchen. It's the kitchen healing laboratory, as Queen of Fuva calls it. And I appreciate that name for it because it really is a place where you experiment, where you put things together, where you create something out of nothing. I mean, that's magical, where you discover new cures. So I come from the kitchen, and also it's where the light is. So you got to always follow the light, y'all. I know they tell you when you're leaving this earth, don't follow the light, but it's okay. Follow the light. Hey, Crystal, good girl, Brown. Hey, Ifua. Hey, Shandia. Hey, Tamiko. So good to see you ladies on the call tonight. Hey, Jean Page. Hey, Latoya Lewis. Let me just say hi to people for a while. I think that was Renata. Renata, I think I saw your heart go up, so I think you in the house as well. I'm starting to recognize the faces, which is nice. Shandia, greeting, yes, greetings, queen, to you as well. So today, y'all, let me tell you what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about something that since I've been doing consultations or, you know, being in the holistic practitioner business, this is something that people ask me about every day, all day, all the time for years. Greetings, Miss Lisa. You look amazing. Thank you, sweetie. I'm feeling amazing. So that's always good. Greetings, the lovely Queen Nubia. Greetings, Latoya Lewis. And thank you so much yourself. You are lovely and beautiful. And I thank you for being here tonight. So yeah, you know, this is like, I want to say, you know, tune in tomorrow. You know, I'm coming back with, you know, it's important to do these. And I know that. And really what I'm doing is I'm really living to my highest potential in every way. And one thing about when you live to your highest potential is you do something new and you do something new that helps you to express a part of yourself that needs to be expressed. And today we're going to talk about that because a lot of people think their passion or their self-expression is something that is, is connected to their divine purpose. And I'm going to tell you that it is true that your passion and self-expression is attached to your divine purpose. But guess what? The question that I was saying before that everyone continually asks me that calls me for a consultation is on, in some way or another, they want to know what is my divine purpose? So let me give you the quick answer and then we're going to get into it. You don't have one divine purpose. See, this is why you are confused, you're sick, you're stagnant, you're depressed, you're unhappy, you don't understand why you haven't found it yet, you don't know why and when you're going to find it, you're frustrated, you're stressed out, because you're looking for one divine purpose. And the fact that the reason why you're looking for one divine purpose is even though that sounds very spiritual to look for your divine purpose, which is the one and only, how could there be one and only divine purpose? Is there one and only day in the week? Is there one and only day in the year? Is there one and only person in the world? Is there one and only color? Is there one and only flower? Is there one and only tree? Why the heck would there be a one and only divine purpose for you? How you doing, Janelle? Why would that be? See, think about it. And let me tell you how deep this is. What I'm doing these days is I'm really saying to you that even metaphysics, the way we've learned it from a Eurocentric point of view and not an Afrocentric point of view, is confusing the heck out of us. Serena Robertson, Rob, Roberson, how are you, Queen? Do you understand? It has confused us totally. And so what I want to do when I come here is just dispel or release or move the cobwebs out of the confusion that we are looking for our one divine purpose and wondering why we're depressed because we think that we think that so and so we think that Romare Bearden found his one divine purpose. We think that uh, Oprah Winfrey found her one divine purpose. We're looking at people thinking that they only can do, they're doing one thing and that's their divine purpose when they have multiple talents. That's why you see big businesses buy a company and the company is doing great and then they sell the company. Everybody goes, why? And, or, and because they want to do something else. 
It's like an artist who we like the style they had for five or ten years, and they decided to go from R&B, thank you for the hearts and the loves, and they decided to go rock, and we mad because we like, well, well, I liked them when they was R&B, and we get mad at them because how dare they change what I thought they were and who they should be, their divine purpose. It's their the divine purpose. If your divine purpose does not continually change, then you're nuts. But usually you think because you don't have one divine purpose, you're nuts. And that the opposite is true. So, hey, sis, Serena. Hey, Monisha, colon, hydrotherapist. How are you, queen? So let me first tell you, what because I always got to let you know. When my course that I just taught, is, it was on Sunday, November 6th. It was called Spiritual, I mean, it's called Creating Healthy Money Rituals, basically to get whatever you want. And in it, hey, how cool. And in it, what, what I really was getting at, and if you want to buy the replays, you can buy the replay for $77. If you want the worksheet included, it's $87. It is on the website now. I'm going to suggest that you get it. Because I know a lot of you are looking for this one dang divine purpose and can't figure out why you don't like to do what you used to do. Let me tell you this idea of the one divine purpose and why it's so kind of dangerous and why I think that we're in a constant state of depression. Okay? Hello, so good to see your face. You too, sweetie, Malayli, Malile, Malele, Malele. I hope that's right. So let me explain to you. I got notes, y'all. So you see another my book because I want to make sure I hit them all tonight. So this is the idea of stop looking for your one and only divine purpose. It doesn't exist. You get bored because you have completed that mission. So let me explain this to you. And once I explain this to you, you are going to get it like you've never gotten it before. Again, I invite you to go and, and purchase the replay of the Sunday Intensive Creating Healthy Money Rituals to get whatever you want because I'm working with your mind. My mission is to get your mind right. We are so focused on all these things that are going on that we think it's going to affect our lives and only we can affect our lives, but we got to change our minds. So another thing in December, I'm teaching y'all all people crying about Trump and thinking about Trump. I got to Let me do my Trump thing. And then I'm, now I'm not going to never talk about him again. I promise you, after I talk about him right now, you will not hear me talk about him again. Rashida, how are you, queen? You will wa watch this because I'm going to talk about the divine purpose. But I, Bianca, how are you, queen? Let me get this out. I keep telling y'all, I've been saying it for years, but I'm saying it with fervor now. We have to create our own. If he is for the rich and wealthy, why don't you just get rich and wealthy? Why are we fighting what we know to be true? Why are we being irresponsible and not taking care of our families? Why are we not learning how to have a business, start a business, and more importantly, sell? Sell what we have in order to get what we want. We have to do it. Black girl magic, absolutely. We're not doing it. And I'm going to tell you about this idea of entrepreneurship when it comes to the divine purpose and why we still become entrepreneurs and we're still struggling and we're still stuck and we still haven't found our divine purpose. Or we go, I used to like to do that, but I don't anymore. What I'm teaching, what I taught, and you can get the replay in the Creating Healthy Money Rituals is how to create a formula that's going to work no matter how many times your divine purpose changes, no matter how many divine purposes that you have at any given time, that formula is going to help you. Yes, say that. Thank you. Hey, Oshun Lottie. How are you? Greetings. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show So, that, So I really want you to get that. And in December, my three-hour live virtual intensive is called uh, The Spiritual Art of whatever, making money or something like that, sell or be sold. The spiritual art of selling, sell or be sold. It's important, even for, especially for entrepreneurs who feel like I still struggle or it's not a job nine to five, but it's still that worry that it, what is, what is my next amount of money or revenue or those that think I have nothing to sell. I really want you in the next intensive because you're the one that has the most to sell and you don't even know it. If there was no urgency to do better, I'm not going to sit around. Harriet Tubman did not sit around and think about, we slaves. We're going to always be slaves. Oh, no, new master, more slavery. She thought, new master, time to get the hell out. 
New master, time to change the system. New master, time to get free. That's how I look at the whole thing. I'll be honest, Obama was in for eight years. I ain't even know him. I never talked about him. He ain't affect my life in no way. I can't be bothered. I got other things to do, and I'm focusing on what is what I need to do for myself and my people. And so I would suggest that you take that. Go get the replay on my website, www.theblackberrybeauty.com, how to create healthy money rituals, and also sign up. But the real deal is the January intensive called Blackberry Beauty Secrets, How to Glow from Head to Toe. And that's the one. And I'll tell you about that. But let's talk about the divine purpose. And thank you for the hearts and the love. I love it. Ashley Lee, Candice, how are you? My goal is becoming a life coach and Christian counselor. I know it's possible to get certified, but how to gain clients? Oh, exactly. You know what, Ashley, why I think that's so important what you said? You're right. I know people now that have studied with some of the greatest, you know, motivational speakers, some of the greatest coaches, some of the greatest counselors, and they know how to do it. They done got a website by the greatest website designer, and they still ain't selling. And I'm going to tell you why I will get the intensive. Can't wait. That's right. Thank you, sweetie. And Landria Jones, how are you? So I'll tell you, I'll tell you why that the client thing, why that's, it's not that there's not enough clients. It's not that the clients are, that there's not enough money. It's not that somebody else is taking your clients or somebody else could even take your clients. We know it's an abundant universe. We know it's enough for everyone else. It's knowing that and believing that. It's changing our mind around money. Most of us are afraid to ask for it, particularly, and I respect the Christian belief system. I, you see, I big it up as much as I can, but religion, even metaphysics, even spirituality, as somehow on a deep level, it's got us like it's kind of wrong to ask for money. It's kind of greedy. It's kind of evil. It's kind of not right. And what I do is I get your mind right. So buying the replay of the Sunday, November 6th intense is going to get the mind right. And in December, we're going to talk about how to get clients because we're going to fix this. we got three hours. In three hours, we're going to do a lot. We're going to do a lot, and it's going to help. And hopefully tonight's talk, <laughs> tonight's talk, hope, thank you for the hearts and the love. I appreciate it. Hopefully tonight's talk is going to open your mind up so deeply, you're going to be like, okay, I, I want this. I want to get these $97 intensives. I'm going to go get the replay tonight. I'm going to get my mind right. I'm going to wait for the December 11th. We're going to know how to sell or be sold. You know how to buy. If you, if you know how to buy, you know how to sell. If you know how to buy, you know how to sell. And once we get our minds over the fact that it's okay, even us that think that it's okay. I know you do things as entrepreneurs. I know you lower your prices. I know you have too many sales. I know you do two for one. I know you do because I did it. You used to do it. I ain't doing it no more. I do get specials, but I get specials once I understand that the person, I, you know what? It's a way to do it, and I'm going to show you how. So let's, let's love y'all. So hey, Tanya. Hey, Maisha. So we ain't thinking about no dang Trump scaring us. What's going to get us to get our money on? We're going to be on the side of the wealthy. We're going to buy the land. By the time I'm done with you, <laughs> you'll be buying land and you'll be owning property, income property, not just the house that you live in. Hey, hey, she's a bronze goddess. Hey, Angela, I made it. You made it, Angela. You are here. And Jacqueline been trying to get on. I hope she gets it together and gets on. So I would love to see her. But, you know, you, you got to know. You got to know that this is the greatest opportunity to do what we do. I'm telling y'all, if, if I could get each individual entrepreneur, black woman or man entrepreneur, to start living to their highest potential in their business, and then we're able to know that that sister has $200,000 coming in a year, that one has $300,000, doing what they love, and we're going to talk about this idea of doing what you love, we're going to talk about it, and this sister's got 500. And then think about it, y'all. We see this, this complex that's 20-unit apartment building. And we can come in as three of us as investors. And everybody makes money off the deal where we can go invest in another 40-unit apartment building and continue that on. This is not hard to do. But first, we got to stack the cash. But before we stack the cash, we got to learn how to stack the cash. 
The, this, the reason why I'm doing the January intensive, Blackberry Beauty Secrets, How to Glow from Head to Toe, because I realize, what am I, this, this energy, how do you, you're going to have to have a lot of energy to survive in this time and this way with the folks that's, you know, in whatever, they ain't even in power. You're going to have to eat right. So in the January Intensive Blackberry Beauty Secrets, How to Glow from Head to Toe, that's my big one. That's the six weeks. That's $497. That's the one where you're going to get your food right. I'm going to give you a surefire way to be either more raw, more vegan, or more vegetarian, more healthy than you've ever been. And we're going to learn in six weeks. I'm going to get you to use affirmations and visualizations practically, not just some wishful thinking and hoping it's going to come through. I'm going to show you how to use your goals and aspirations. I'm going to show you what sea salt really does. I'm going to show you what uh, going to sit in in the sun. I'm going to show you what I'm six weeks of this. How do you drink a gallon of water a day? Can you do it? How do you lose that weight? Because your energy level, if it's not up, somebody else is going to step right over you. If you dying and sick and depressed, how you going to sell? How you going to be great? How you going to still be here? So that Blackberry Beauty Secret, it's the most important of the intensives. The three hours, I'm just trying to open you up. So let's go back and thank you for the hearts I appreciate. Hey, Chandra, love you too, darling. Okay, so Shandia, I need that. Great. Good. So come on in. First, like I said, if you can do the uh, replays for $77, go get that. It's on the website now. And also the $97 December one is on the website if you want to purchase it early. Three hours, you're in, you're out, and you're going to learn something, believe me. Okay, so today, though, we are talking about stop looking for your one and only divine purpose. It doesn't exist. So, And, I, and the first thing I say is you get bored because you have completed the mission. So this is the deal. Remember when you were, as a kid, you were growing up, Ashley, you are helping me. Thank you, Queen. I'm so glad. Shandia, yes, yes, I'm ready. Great. Remember when you was a kid? I know that I, I experienced this. And that adult come in your life and they be like, hey, little girl, what do you want to be when you grow up? And then we all got an answer. A fireman, a policeman, a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer. I don't know, a mother. Everybody has something to say. I don't know. Like, And I realized that why did they only ask us, what the one thing we want to be. Do you understand that even as children, we were already conditioned to say that we wanted to be that one thing? And then guess what happened? We had to stick with that. It's like once we said it, everybody held us to it. Uh oh, Salami, how are you? Peace, Jen Sadiq, how you doing? It's like once we said it at five or seven or nine, because I said I wanted to be a teacher, which I'm doing, but it, I didn't know I could do it this way, right? It's like we were stay, stuck with it. I'm going to tell you how I know. Because then somehow we were forced to go to junior high school. And then my daughter's junior high school, even though it was an art school, Oakland School for the Arts, they still had to choose an emphasis. One emphasis. You couldn't do drama and, and, and writing or literary arts. You couldn't do media and um, visual arts. You only could choose one. Now, like I said, there's not one star in the sky. <laughs> There's not one leaf on a tree. There's not one flower in the kingdom or the queendom. But for some reason, there's only one thing that I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be able to do and supposed to want to do and be good at. And this is causes insanity and why we don't go to our divine purpose or why we don't live from a divine purpose because we're looking for one when we got 59, 159, 1,159. But people tell us, you're schizo. You never just settle down. You can't make up your mind. Now you want to do something else as if you're loco and they are normal. But wait, then you go to high school and high school says, hey, Mariella, good day, queen. Hey, Ralph Dorton. Hey, Kim Carter. Then you go to high school. High school's doozy. That's the, usually at the point you get to high school, either you can't wait to get the heck out of it. That was me. Or are you trying to figure out, because they want you to pick a major in high school. What are you going to major in? I went to a school in, in New York, in Manhattan. It was called, it is probably still there, Norman Thomas. And at that time, it was a, a I don't know, I guess you call it, I don't know what you call that school, a trade school. But anyway, out of the choices, I chose to be a secretary. I am the wor I was the worst secretary ever. Like I, But hey, it wasn't too many choices. I didn't like the other choices. I chose secretary. So I had to choose a major again. Not five majors. I only could choose one. 
Like I said, ain't one leaf on a tree, but somehow I was supposed to be happy with the one dang uh, major. So check out the conditioning, because I think you see it. Ashley Lee says, yes. Chandra says, cannot be put in one box preach, goddess. That's right. But this is very serious because everybody comes to me with, I want to know my divine purpose. I've been searching for it for so long. And you searching for the one and you went over five when you were searching for the one. There was 15 you could have did, but searching for the one. But it's not your fault. They, they, they condition us this way. Then you finally get out of high school. And if you were any like me, hallelujah, because that was just way too much school. Then you go into college, and college is all about the major. College is about the major. And if you really, you know, exciting, you take two majors, or you take a major and a minor, you're really doing something then. And people then tell you, you're doing too much. A major and a minor? Wow, you should just do one thing. Like, why are you trying to do five? Like, that's so crazy. And you saw the thing, I got to fit into molecular biology. Or I said I wanted to be a teacher at five. I got to continue to be a teacher at five. And what happens is, because they leave no room to one major, what happens to development, growing up? <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. What happened to maturing throughout this process from five years old to now you're 18, 19, and 20 in college? What happened to all of that? Maybe what you said at five, why are you holding that against me? Why are you holding me to what I said last year? And so what happened, I'm going to give real examples, y'all. Yo. You know I am. You know I'm going to give real examples. So the first thing I said was you get bored because you have completed that mission. So I've seen this happen. This is even in the artistic community. So let all the artists out there listen closely. I'm about to throw something on you, and I think you're going to like it. Last time I went to get my nails done, the owner said, I didn't know you were so indecisive, Candace. Laugh out loud. Quickly told her I'm exactly what I need to be. Absolutely. Bianca J, you said it's interesting you say this. I'm homeschooling my girls and my youngest likes to do two things at once. Like she'll watch a video for science while completing math problems. And I'll say focus on one. Go ahead, sister. But you realize it now, right? And, and I'll say focus on one thing. But, but Bianca, I love it. You're saying that to say, but now I know better. But now I see. So let me, let, oh, yeah, this is good. So let me tell you that when you, I want to make sure, because when I wrote it, I said it best. Um, you get bored because you have completed that mission. So I, okay, artistic community, listen, we're talking to y'all, as which it should be everybody, but I remember I used to dance. Like people said, oh, Nubia the dancer. Oh, you know Nubia, she's a dancer. Oh, you know Nubia's a dancer. You know Nubia takes all the cousins. Guess what? I don't dance like that anymore. And people go, well, why don't you just go back to dancing? Because I'd be like, you know, I'm bored. I want to do something different. Well, don't you like dancing? You used to dance. I don't want to dance no more. I've completed that. It was a, a divine purpose for the moment. It was good while it lasted. I don't want to dance anymore. I want to do something different and new. Why do you keep trying to tell me to dance? It was the same thing. I realized when I got bored, it was because I was supposed to move to something else. But everybody kept telling me, but that's what we know you for. That's what you do. Why are you not still doing that? Because they don't know that they can let go of something and not be flighty and labeled as flighty or indecisive. Yes, Bianca says, I know better. And then I remember I was a poet, y'all. People in the Bay knew me as a poet. I would do poetry. I worked with a group called African Roots of Jazz. I was a poet and a dancer. And now I don't never do spoken word. And people go, well, maybe you should go back to your spoken word. I mean, like, don't you miss doing your spoken word? What you think I'm doing right now? This is spoken word. <laughs> doing YouTube videos is spoken word. I, when I realized that what you do can develop in many different ways, that's when I became free. That's when I understood that there was no one thing that I was going to do. And if I kept doing the one thing, I was going to be depressed. I was going to get bored because I couldn't figure out why I didn't have vigor and zeal and zest for the one thing. I completed that. It's like coming into Candace, go back. No, go forward. Yes, Jacqueline Davis, right? Exactly, the confusion. Rafaela, how are you? And then you know what? Well, this is when it really hit me. I said, you know what? I can't do that anymore. It don't make my heart sing. It's not that I'm flighty. It's that 
that went through me already. It was completed. It's like karma. And they talk about how we come back and some people have say, well, how come this good person died young, you know, this lifetime and this old man who's mean lives forever? It's not because the, the young, the good die young and old people too mean to die. It's that the young person completed its karma. That the young person came on the earth for the amount of time it needed to come this time. That it's been here many times before. So you got to look at your divine purpose as something that is not new. Maybe you were just completing it. Maybe that's why in the, in the first 10 years of your life you, were, you took ballet and you was a dancer. And now you don't want to do nothing like that. Because maybe you were just completing that from your last life. Maybe this life you were supposed to complete some other things and even start some new stuff. Every time you feel bored, every time you feel stagnant in what you used to love, don't feel guilty about not loving it anymore. See, I've seen this with entrepreneurs who don't really love their business because they're forcing themselves to stay in, I just do massages, I just do a colonic, so I just do, um, you know, herbs, or I just do, I'll give you another example where I noticed it, Ashley Lee, that's why I can't stay on jobs too long, absolutely, I need to move around and do different things, sometimes I just want to do so much, oh my goodness, you're helping me tonight, thank you, I'm so glad. I remember, I talk about even spirituality. We stay in the same religious or spiritual circles or spiritual belief system. And, and, she, and I, oh, I know now. You're going, wait a second now. She talking now. I've seen it happen. I used to do the book Sacred Woman by Queen of Four. It came out in 2000. I started doing it in 2000. By 2015, 14, I saw myself waning. I said, you know what? I don't necessarily want to call up it anymore. I don't necessarily want to do it in that exact way. I, I, I took some things from it and I got scared. I thought I was going, I now know how Christians feel. I thought I was going to go to hell because I wasn't calling up Haru personally anymore. I thought hell was coming because I stopped doing it. And I didn't realize that I that, that cycle move came through. It was perfect. It, it got me what I needed at the time, but that I needed to do it differently. And that I wasn't going to hell, that maybe that my growth depended that I let some aspects of it go. No disrespect to her program, it's beautiful, but I feel almost sorry a lot of times for some entrepreneurs that we stick or get stuck in our own thing. Because everybody knows us that way. It's like the musician or the actor. When you try to do something different, people go, no, no, no. I'm not going to pay for that different thing you're trying to do. I'm only going to pay for the thing you did 15 years ago. That's why child actors are so damn messed up. Because everybody wondering why they're not cute little Tootie anymore. Tootie got big breasts now. She's a whole other person. But we don't want her to be that. That's something wrong. Her breast is too big. What kind of nonsense is that? She's not 12. You got to look at things in a deeper way. K. O'Brien, how are you, queen? I, if you stay, even if you look at the belief system you're in and say, how can I grow in that? How can I change? How can I make that better? Or maybe it's just not for me anymore. You know, I've been talking about metaphysics a lot. I love metaphysics, but I think the way that it was taught, especially from the Eurocentric point of view, is it's, 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 it's a fantasy island type stuff. We got we to gotta use it in the way that was used with our ancestors. Word, sound, and power always. That never goes out of style. But what words, what sound, and what power changes? And that's so important. If you are having a business and you're struggling, maybe you're going against the grain. Maybe the universe is saying to you, could you add something, take away something, maybe not even do that. Maybe you got other skills you're missing out on. Look, every passion ain't profitable. Maybe that was right. like when I see, I see, I'll tell you something that I see a lot. So yoga, right? Yoga. Now, I think that this is what a Tibetan brother told me, a, a brother that owns a Tibetan store, a Tibetan brother that's in Berkeley. And he talked about this store called Luluman. I guess they make yoga clothes. I'm sure it's some Eurocentric company that makes yoga clothes. And he said, do you, what kind of crap is that? He said, first of all, the stuff ain't even breathable. It's some unnatural fibers. He says it's taking their culture and appropriating it. But more than that, yogas, yogis didn't wear no skin-tight spandex pants. Yogas wore loose clothes. 
They wore loincloths. They didn't wear no dang spandex and this and that. And what I see is, I see a lot of us in the natural metaphysic healing community where we'd be like, well, I want to be a yoga therapist or I want to be a yoga teacher. I want to be... And then you do it. First of all, it's oversaturated. So you got a competition with a lot of people. But then you realize, I, I liked yoga before I went to school for it. Now it's like something I have to teach and it doesn't resonate with me. It's when you try to turn everything into a business or everything into a job or everything, try to commodify everything. Sometimes it doesn't work and what winds up being is something as beautiful and natural as yoga. Maybe you didn't need to go to school to get a yoga certificate. Maybe you just needed to do yoga. Maybe it was just for you. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be turned into a business. Maybe you and the best fried chicken, and I know you'll think I'm crazy because I'm a vegan. I am. I'm a raw foodist. And I always talk about somebody selling their fried chicken, but I'm just trying to keep this really real. Maybe your fried chicken is where the business is and not the yoga certificate. I ain't taking this away from those that do yoga. I'm just using that as an example. It could be people that says, I'm a meditational instructor. Like, I don't, you know, that's cool. But I feel like we can't do what they do. See, they can go get all that stuff because they got other things to sustain them. I feel like we don't have to give up what makes us feel good. But it might not stick forever. You might not want to teach yoga forever. Good evening, Nubia. Good evening, Kai. So I'm telling you that you're going to change. When you get to a place, thank you for the hearts and the love. I know because I'm coming with some stuff and I know some people's going, I'm going to be quiet now. I'm going to be quiet because she's going there and it might be hurting. Me. I don't mean to hurt your feelings. I want you to make money and be rich. I want you to know your worth is not just in one thing. I want you to understand that just because you got a certificate in it don't mean it's what you're supposed to be teaching and monetizing. That's what I want you to know. I want you to know that your divine purpose is not one thing that stays in one place at one time. I want you to know you're going to get bored. And when you get bored, you should listen to that and understand that that's done. And I ain't wrong or crazy or cray cray because that's done. Thank you for those hearts. I really appreciate it. Deanna Wilkinson. Hey, sister, how are you? So I realize now that this idea that stay in your place one thing at a time, don't do nothing else. You, why are you always changing? You think you got to like that forever and you are going nuts. And somebody could tell you, girl, I know you went to school for law and I know you got loans up to Yahoo because you went to law school. And I, but girl, you don't want to do it no more. And you want to do yoga, go do yoga. Now I'm a little more different. I'm, if you come into my December intensive, I'm a, I'm going to have you right there in the live course and you're going to tell me what you do and who you are. And I'm going to suggest to you that I can see something else that's going to bring you into cash and you're going to like doing it. You're going to like doing it. And everything else is things that you like to do. Why can't, why everything got to be the career? Why everything got to be, that's the thing. What if it ain't the thing anymore? Then what do you do? You feel sad because you feel like you're flighty? You're not flighty. Thank you. Yes, Deanna. Alexander, Alexandra, how are you, queen? Let's go to the next item on the list. When you don't have multiple purposes, you cease to grow. When you don't have multiple purposes. Am I telling you the opposite of what they tell you? When you don't have multiple purposes, you cease to grow. Let's think about this. I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying that if you tell me that all you love to do is dance all day long, well, I don't believe you. I think that you do other things and you love to do other things first. And I think that if you put all your eggs in one basket, now what the elders told us about that one? That, I mean, we got to listen to some of these sayings. This stuff is ancient. Ancient African wisdom for the modern sister. That's all the stuff I'm teaching in the Blackberry Beauty. Why are you putting all your eggs in one basket? You might not be able to dance forever. You might hurt your body. There's nothing else you want to do. There's nothing else that excites you. Maybe the dancing ain't going to make you no money. Like, oh, an artist, a poor artist. I don't believe you have to be a starving artist. At the same time, saying if that's not where the money is, why don't you follow where it is? Because it's inside of you. Do you really think the creator gave you one purpose and one talent? 
Do you really think that Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther King really just had, I, when I think of them, I think of multi-talents. I know this is true because if we go back to ancient Kemet, Imhotep was a multi-talent. He could do everything. Was he special? No, he was normal. We're special, and I don't mean in a good way. <laughs> we're special if we don't understand that we're multi-dimensional, multi-purpose, and that when we don't want to do something anymore, it's because we have completed the karma of that. Or it will rearrange or transmute itself into something different. Am I not speaking a word? So therefore, I'm still a spoken word artist. Do you understand that? If you don't, you can go to my website and for $77 or $87, you can get my first three-hour intensive replay called Creating Healthy Money Rituals to Get Whatever You Want. If you want to start a business or you want to get your mind right to start a business, then, then the, uh, uh, creating spiritual, uh, uh, so the spiritual art of selling, sell or be sold, December intensive. And if you want to just really get the energy so when the stuff starts pouring in, because a lot of us, we get these great ideas of everything we want to do and we ain't got no energy. That fool is going to slow you down. That lack of self-care, you ain't going to make it. So if you're not in the Black Bear Beauty Secrets, sign up for that. If you're saving your money for that one, then do that because it's, it's, it's going to change the game. Ashley Lee, we have many rivers and other words, like you said. We have many gifts inside of us. Yes, girl. And most of us are going to die singing one song. Now, I'm going to say it again. Most of us are going to die singing one song when we know we like 50,000 songs. Do you have one CD? Do you have one record you listen to every day? I don't mean one record. I mean that you like. I mean you just got one album, <laughs> one CD. You got one song on your iPod. You don't have that. So why are you trying to live with one song inside of you? Trying to figure out why you don't feel good anymore. It's okay. Don't constantly. Let me. Hmm. Hmm. Janine. Hi, Janine, sweetie. What I'm saying is. This is what metaphysical is. This whole like a man, you know, I'm going to meditate on that. No, learn it fast. They say fail fast. I say learn fast. That's Nubia I, Lisa Sutton, Lisa Marie Goodson. Learn fast. You don't have time to contemplate why I don't feel like I want to teach and be a school teacher anymore. Why don't I feel I want to be a yoga instructor anymore. What? Because you don't feel it because you've exhausted it because you've done your thing. You've moved through it. Your karma is complete. That's it. We don't have time to focus on the esoteric where it's keeping us in the same place. In the Blackberry Beauty Secrets, How to Glow from Head to Toe, and the $77 replay that I just did, I'm showing you how to use metaphysics to get exactly what you want right now. I ain't telling you to con. You gonna know. I'm gonna say set a goal. You're gonna be like, well, well the goal is. I'm gonna say that's not the goal. You're gonna be like, okay, okay, this is the goal. I'm gonna go. That's not the goal. And then you're gonna go, no, 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 this is the goal. No, that's not the goal either. Because we gotta get all the stuff somebody told us that we should do and not do. I've seen now artists who were so stuck on the dance, who were so stuck on the the painting, who were so stuck that they didn't put things in place. So now that they can't dance. Now that they can't sing because their voice is not there, they wasn't thinking about how do I create a business? How do I monetize? How do I commodify my own talent that I can do it forever? First of all, you have to develop all of the things that's within you. That's how you keep going. If you're 99 years old and you couldn't move, but if you, if you go to Blackberry Beauty Secrets Intensive in January, your mind going to be so strong that you can monetize the, ment the information. Think about that movie, Miss Jane Pittman. Miss Jane Pittman was old. She was getting older as it seemed like she was telling the story. But why did Miss Jane Pittman remember every single detail of everything that happened to us? And I know it's fiction, but still, every single thing that happened to us since she was a little girl. How come Miss Jane Pittman remembered that? Because Miss Jane Pittman's mind was strong. If Miss Jane Pittman was right, she could have charged. She could have sat in a classroom in her house and had, and had students come over and pay a fee 
to hear them tell her about history. You pay for that history class when you go to college. Why you don't pay for that history class with Miss Emma that lived down the street from you who sit on the porch? Let me get me in there. I'll, I'll, I'll monetize Miss Emma and her information. That's valuable. Stop thinking and being so stuck in the one way that when you get 55, 60, 65, 70, you're going, oops, I'm stuck. I don't know where to go. I don't have any money. My job, I can't work anymore. I can't do massage therapy because my arms hurt, my legs hurt. There's some things, why do we go into things not thinking about the future? Or why do we hold on to something that don't feel as good to us anymore? And in Blackberry Beauty Secrets, I'll be answering that question and more. Are you still there? Because it seemed kind of quiet. I know I'm going in. Dryas Williams, how are you, sweetie? Diarist, Diarist Williams. I'm sorry, Diarist. That's beautiful. Um, the next one is addiction comes from not doing the many things. Thank you for the hearts. That's how I know you are alive. Okay, amen. I say addiction comes from not doing the many things you were brought on this earth to do. I understand addiction because I was I was an addict. Okay, I know you addict too. You are you addicted to something, and I'm not talking about that addiction where it's an obsession, obsession where it's actually good. I'm talking about you addicted to food or alcohol or weed or sex or bad relationships or something, stupid movies, dang scandal. You're addicted to something. Everybody is. So everybody was an addict because I don't want to say I am an addict. I'm not holding that, but I love those hearts. I love those hearts. Thank you. G. Lisa Lewis Hart says, truth. Renetta Moki, yes, you are speaking to me. I'm so glad. Shandia, absorbing this knowledge. Thank you. Sean Diallo, I see you watching. Hi, say hi. So let me read this little line again. So I said, addictions come from not doing the many things you were brought on this earth to do. I noticed that every time I wanted to smoke weed, every time I wanted to go out for organic wine, I mean, I'm a, I was a special alcoholic. I, I had like standards with my alcohol, okay? <laughs> y'all should laugh. This is funny stuff. I was not going, no, y'all. I would, yeah, I'm telling you, food. That's right. Hi, Queen. Hi, Penny. Hey, Deanna says food. I was special, y'all. I wouldn't drink it if it wasn't organic. I'd be like, you know what? Don't want it that bad. But I still was addicted. But every time I smoked weed, every time I drank, I knew I was, I had completed something that I was doing. I needed to put new life into that thing. But I didn't know that I could, I didn't know I had permission to change. I didn't know I had permission to say that that does not work for me anymore. That I've exhausted that. That I need a new challenge. That I need something new to turn me on. So instead, I smoked and got high so I could forget. Thank you. Laugh out loud. Shoot, Lottie, you hear me? Sean Diallo, how you doing? Yes, hi, my sister. Hi to you as well. That's when I was like, wow, you mean, and when you look back at every time you stuffed your face or you smoked or you drank, look back and say, was I really doing all of me? Not just the, the painting that I grew up doing or the dancing that I've been doing for 99 years or whatever. I mean the other things that wanted to come out. Maybe you didn't like me. You know, you was like, I don't really want to go to the spoken word clubs anymore and get on the mic. And I did that already. That was nice. I liked it. I don't really want to dance on stage or with a troupe. I did that already. That was nice. I didn't know. I thought I was something wrong with me. So I just smoked and that was it. Thank you for the laughter. I love it. So every time you're into an addiction. So if you don't want to be addicted. My last intensive that happened on November 6th, the three-hour intensive called Creating Healthy Money Rituals. I know, I'm just going to say Creating Healthy Rituals. The formula that I give will help you get over your addictions. If you're serious about selling, and when I say selling, I want to tell people my December intensive, the spiritual art of selling, sell or be sold. Let me tell you who that's for. It's not just for you that want to start your own business. It's not just for the person who has a business. Believe it or not, it's for a person who wants to sell themselves. When I say sell yourself, I don't mean really just selling something you have, exchanging it for money. I mean selling your true self. I mean, when I say selling, in a lot of ways, I mean expressing who you are. I mean being your true self. Most of us don't sell ourselves because we don't think much of ourselves. Because you know why? Because we think we only got one divine purpose. 
And when we tell people, people go, well, ho, ho, tell me a little about yourself. And you start naming off, I'm married, I'm a dancer, I'm a teacher. And guess what? You just stop there because you, you ain't sold yourself because you don't know who yourself is. You don't know who you are. And you don't know that what you was last week and you ain't this week. And you're not going to be next week. Wouldn't it be great? But I'm telling you that there is still a system that you can have that go through the changes. Because I don't think the changes even need to be separate. Like one thing is gone and now the new thing and one thing is gone and now the new thing. I think you can stack these changes. I think you can add the changes to the growing you. And that that's why your business is stagnant because your business is still trying to fit you know, you're still trying to wear them bell bottoms from 1972 and it's 2016. Now, I'm not saying that bell bottoms is not maybe came back out again in 2016, but they ain't the same bell bottoms of 1972. You've seen people that are still living in the past and they wonder, well, my business is this. Could you be open that it's something else now? Could you be open to the fact that you don't have to live that? I've seen people, they're not, they say they're holistic practitioners but they're not really living it in real life. They got addictions or they're, they're not living right because they think that they have to be, they started off that way. They make their money that way. So therefore, that was me. I was trying to be and I thought I needed to be and I got all confused because I was trying to be what y'all like me being and then what I knew I could be. And then, and when I stopped thinking about that, I don't need to be one thing or that I can rearrange how I do it. Oh, I can add to it. That's when I became free. That's when I became free. If it was up to the slave master, Harriet Tubman was only supposed to be a slave. She was not, excuse me, supposed to be an abolitionist. She was not supposed to be a brave woman. If it was up to Harriet Tubman Christian religion, she was not supposed to carry a gun. She was not supposed to threaten to kill her own people if they went back and they didn't go forward. So you should stop trying to be, you got to get over your issues with money and asking for it. You got to get over your issues with starting a business or selling yourself. You got to get over your issues of being multi-talented. You got, why are you stuffing that down? But I mean, it's a rhetorical and thank you for the hearts and the love. I know why. G. Lisa Lewis Hart, thank you. Tiffany, how are you, Tiffany? How you doing our day, or Ada? How are you? Okay, let's go to the next one, because I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting excited. Okay, the, oh, this is the last one. The last one is, it's a, the society doesn't have a, a clue about what passion, let me see if I can find the rest of this, what passion really mean. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there's another one after this. So I said society doesn't have a clue about what passion really means. Society says, I love that person because I admire them for their passion. But see, I don't trust society because they love you one minute and they hate you the next. You only admire me when my passion is what you're used to me doing. It's what I came out doing. It's what you know me to do. Hey, Camille. Hey, Fatima. Hi, hello to you, too. Wazoro, I hope to get to see this from the beginning, coming in late on this. No worries. And you got my uh, Harriet Tubman picture up there, so I'm loving that. Um, society has no, I wouldn't let them tell you what passion is. I wouldn't let them. Fatima says, right. Deanna Wilkinson says, I so needed it tonight. Angela says, yes, thank you. I would never let society tell me that my passion is either a good or a bad one. Because like I said, the minute you don't do what they expected you to do, and they do this to their own, I'm sure they did it to Rembrandt and Picasso and the rest of them. That's probably why I'm sure a lot of them were nuts. Because somebody said, Beethoven's whatever that song he made, and they probably stuck him on that one. He's like, you know, I got a whole bunch of damn songs. This ain't the only song I can make. You know, I feel, I think that this is why we have to create Katie Howell. Hey, girl, how are you? Yeah, how you doing? I think we have to have our own communities where we allow our young people, our middle-aged people, and our old people to continually grow and change. We have to have systems in place 
that teach us to think differently about ourselves and the self that had to come up in a Eurocentric society who thinks linear and who doesn't see the we concept but the I. We have to go back to the ancient African wisdom that our ancestors has given us in order to move forward. So therefore we have to send Kofa. We have to not buy into what we're supposed to do. We got to stop asking the wrong questions. That's why we're coming up with the wrong answers. The wrong question is, what is my one divine purpose? The wrong question is, what do you want to be, little girl, little boy, when you grow up? Well, I can't name one thing. Really, what I should have said was, I don't know. <laughs> I'm open. Could be a whole bunch of things. But you can't say that, but I'm giving you permission to say that because a lot of us are living from the little boy and the little girl. Why are we still living from a, de a decision that people put upon us that we made when we were five or six years old? Why are we still living from that? Ada says, right. Why are we still living from that? This is why I really created that intensive I mean, you might watch the video that the replay of creating healthy money rituals because it's about your mind. And I really told you about how to create a goal, an affirmation, and then a, a, um, a action to go with it. You might say, this is simple. But then you watch it again and go, wait a second, she's saying something. Wait a second, she got this exercise. Let me do this. And then you come to the money thing, you might go, well, I know trying to sell nothing. Well, you're going to be sold to then. You might as well be the seller instead of buying and then you'll realize, wait, she's saying, she's talking about group economics. But first she's saying, we can't, I'm not doing business with somebody that don't do business well. I'm not doing business with somebody that don't understand money. I'm not doing business with somebody that don't want it, that's afraid of it. That's going to tear down the whole group. See, money's got to be like breathing. This has got to be a normal conversation that we're having and move on with it. But first, if I could do these live streams every night or as many nights as I possibly can, and I could get you to see where you've been miseducated, like Carter G. Woodson said, the miseducation of the Negro, and we can be educated in the Afrocentric worldview that says and both, not the Eurocentric worldview that says either or. That's the damn problem. That's why you call me asking for one divine true, one divine purpose, because that's the either or concept. Africans don't deal in the either or. It's in both. Go to sleep with that tonight. It's in both, not either or. And when I say Eurocentric, I'm not talking about individual group of people. I'm talking about a way of thinking, because in actuality, European descent people, White folks have been hoodwinked and bamboozled as well. That's why I brought up the, the, uh, the, their so-called greats. They probably went crazy too trying to do one thing. It's universal what I'm teaching, but I'm talking to my people because that is my mission. That is the one thing I'm clear about. What I want to teach you in my last intensive, what I was teaching, and the one coming in December, especially the, the, the January one, Deanna says, I can have it all. Yes. Candace says, church, priest. Yes. What I'm telling you is, you can have a foundation and build many houses on it. I'm going to say it again. You can have a strong foundation and build many houses on it. And I'm talking metaphorically. This is not literally, although we talking literally too, because we should come on. Y'all says, yes, I'm talking literally, but I'm talking metaphorically. And I'll tell you what I mean. My foundation, what I know that I know that will not change in this lifetime is that my duty is to make sure that I live up to my highest potential and take as many black folks with me, that my duty is to speak to my people and to change the minds for the better of my people. That's not limiting. That's not one purpose. But that one, that's my foundation. 
Now, what I build on that means I can talk about sea salt baths. I can talk about visualization. I can talk about meditation. I can talk about getting our money on. I can talk about uh, having a healthy glow. I can talk about raw foods. I can talk about what exercise. I can talk about lifting weights that go get that's so different than the you know, everybody think everybody lift weights is meatheads. You know what I'm saying? I can talk about jogging. My foundation. That's what I'm teaching. Because when you know your foundation, but see what happened to us is the foundation was ripped from under us. But when we go back past slavery, we have one. And I just try to make it easy and plain for you. And that's why I'm focused on money. And I talk about it a lot because it's a good thing. I'm going to have you saying I love money. You Don't get scared. You're going to love it. And this is the last point tonight. Stop letting people tell you you don't stick with things for long. This is the naysayer thing. Let's go back to the little naysayer. Don't people say that? God, oh my God. Now you want to do something else? Oh my God, I thought you said you didn't like that. Well, I changed my mind. I got more information. I thought you said you don't want to do that. Why you ain't happy with what you got? You mean, let me tell you, I can tell you the truth. Every time in my business, I remember when I was selling beauty products. And I was making good money selling beauty products. But I exhausted it. My heart wasn't in it anymore in the same way. So I stopped selling it. I remember my man, so he'd be like, come on now. Oh, now what, you, know, you want to do something else? I was like, yes, it's, my heart's not in it. But he's right. I understand the fear. He's not like that anymore. He's right there with me. He understands me. He likes my way of changing. But I understand the fear of these naysayers or your family, your friends, because they figure you're doing good and they don't want you to do bad. I am so grateful for you inviting me into your world. It shows me that my world has potential. It does, Ada. G. Lewis says yes. I realize that I, it is nervous. It, you will get nervous. A lot of reasons why people stick with the same thing is because their money is attached to that reality or that false reality. So yes, when I stopped selling products, my sales plummeted and it looked like I was going down. But when I started doing consultations and I loved it and I owned it, that was great. Then guess what? Didn't want to do conversations. Not for no $75 or $50 anymore. Got a little, when, I, when people say burnt out, you're not like you're burnt out. I exhausted that way. So the next thing I did was I talked about now, I talked about lots of things. Now it's about money because that's the urgency. It's about people creating businesses, but it's also about the whole person. I, again, today, I got something, a comment under my YouTube video, and it said the same thing. It said, how do you get your skin to glow like that? And again, I said, well, it's the water. No, 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 it's the food. Wait a second, it's the bath. No, it's the visualization. Wait, 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 it's the meditation. No, 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 it's the, and then I said, it's the Blackberry Beauty Secrets. How to glow from head to toe. Starts on January 6, 2017, and it's all of it. And I'm going to teach you how to do it. So that any opportunity that comes to you, all you're going to do is say yes. Because what you're really saying is, how does this black woman love herself so much? How does this black woman feel so confident in who and what she is? I want some of that. And you need to come get some because you already got it in you. And that is a foundation that does not die. And that's what I want to give you. Katie says, so glad to hear the burnout tendency is not a negative thing, but positive for growth and pro progress. You got it, Katie. You got it. It's a lie. Oh, I'm burnt out. Well, you know what? You're not, it's not because you don't, you suppose it, it's not because you don't like what you're doing. It's not because you're doing too much. That's it. Because when you're doing something that you really are, are, are gung-ho about what you're supposed to be doing now, you don't never get burnt out. Don't you think I should be burnt out? Can y'all imagine what I do in the day? Y'all don't even know. Like, y'all have no idea. I am, when I lay down is the only time that I lay down to go to sleep. I'm constantly going because I'm constantly growing. You are growth. And I want everybody to drop it in the, in the, the comment box. I am constantly growing and I love it. Own it, y'all. I am constantly growing and I love it. I would love to hear you say that. I am constantly growing. You want to be real tight? You want to be better than bad? I am constantly growing and changing and I love it. 
I am constantly growing and changing, and I love it. Don't be scared, because some people go, changing, oh no, I don't want to change. Change got me in trouble last time. The last time I changed, things didn't go right. The last time I changed, I lost money. The last time I changed, people didn't want to talk to me. The last time I changed, I didn't have the same friends anymore. And I say hallelujah. I am constantly growing and I love it. Yes, Wazoro. Christian, Christian, I am constantly growing and I love it. Yes. Anybody else? I am constantly, I am constantly. Yes, Renetta. I am constantly growing and changing and I love it. Angela, I am constantly growing and changing, and I love it. I am constantly growing and changing. Yes, G. Lisa, I am constantly growing. I am constantly, I am and I do. Yes, Barbara Jackson. Yes, Johanna, I am constantly growing, and I love it. Candace, I am constantly growing and changing, and I love it. Camille Johnson, yes, I am constantly growing and changing, and I love it. I love y'all, and that's why I'm here. I'm so clear, y'all, why I want you to be in that January intensive. I know, yes, Ada, I am constantly growing and changing and love it. Y'all, I am constantly growing and changing and I love it. G. Lisa, I'm constantly growing and I'm changing and I love it. The reason why, Christian, yes, please say, Tristan, you are growing and changing. Yes, you are. You are. That's my son. Tristan, Tristan, you are growing and changing. Tristan, you are growing and changing. Yes, can you imagine we start with our children? Can you imagine that we, when they want to do two things at once, we go, we need to listen to them. They just normal, they the, the right ones. We're the abnormal ones. Fatima, yes, constantly growing and changing. Ladies, the reason why I'm teaching the intensives is y'all think I'm playing. See, I'm one of them strange black folks. I, I like I say, I'm going to say it every night. I like being around me, myself. I'm not afraid of myself and people that look like me. I think that we can create viable communities that anybody would want to visit and we could be proud of it. I think we can live in love and harmony and prosperity and abundance. I think we can leave a legacy, but I think the change of mind, these live streams are great, but if you want to get down to it, Consider buying the last intensive for $77 or consider buying the December intensive. Just go to the website. But most of all, the Blackberry Beauty Secret, I have, let me tell you why I'm finally teaching it after seven years of being on YouTube. Seven years is because I even see something in me that I didn't see before. I know what you've seen in me is different because I feel it. I know there's a fire that's lit inside of me that I can't put out. I know it. And I'm holding on to it and I got to give it to you. That's why it's going to take six weeks. That's why it's going to take $497. But you ain't going to even think about that money because when you get yourself right holistically, then everything else will come. You want to cry about the man that got president, whoever he is, don't even matter. Cry with you or go fight back with making money. Fight back with selling. Fight back with getting your strategies and systems together so every single thing you want, you can have. Creating healthy rituals to get whatever you want. It's a system and a formula and it works. It, it's not something I made up. It's something that came to me because I had to figure out what when I get what I want, how did I do it? That's what it's about. So, Katie, yes, ma'am. Fatima, I watch you change and evolve. Thank you so much for noticing. Wazoro rubs money fingers together. That's what I'm saying, though. <laughs> so, let me make sure that that was the last one. Yes, it was. Okay, ladies. So, I would love for you to support me by going to my intensive, um, my website, www.theblackberrybeauty.com. And tune in tomorrow. So wait a few things. Because I'm coming tomorrow's Thursday. Yes, Thursday. Well, my husband and I are traveling Friday. Remember, we're going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. Saturday is the Black Power Awards. I was nominated. And I'm, I want to win. So you're all going to help me with your black girl magic and black man magic. I would love for you to do that and see me winning. And then Sunday, I'm going to do an intimate morning with Lisa Marie Goodson. If you are in the Atlanta area, you can go to my website and pay for it to spend two hours with me. And you can ask me anything you want. You can ask me about business, pleasure, love, relationship, marriage, what I see, what I see in you, 
What I see that you, what I feel coming through, whatever, it doesn't even matter. It's going to be me, only 10 women. I'm asking for 10. I don't have, I don't have near 10 now. So there's plenty of room. Go to the website if you want that. Again, my creating healthy rituals to get whatever you want. I have the replay. It's on the website. It's $77. If you want to include the worksheet, it's 87 I have another intensive in December called Spiritual Art of Selling, Sell or Be Sold. Um, and then, of course, the big one in January 6th, Blackberry Beauty Secrets, a six-week six -week virtual intensive that teaches you how to build the foundation so you can build the many houses. So I hope you find something that you like. Uh, constantly, Penny says, I am constantly growing and changing every day and for a lifetime. Absolutely. What I hope that these live streams are doing is it's giving you a reason to be here, to live, to want to get up the next morning not just hope. I'm not just motivating, although I'm glad that we, I can motivate. I'm not just inspiring, although I love inspiring. I got practical things that we can do to ensure that our future is great. And it doesn't matter how old you are. I hope you think about your divine purpose in a different way. I hope you don't make yourself ever feel wrong about wanting to do and needing to do and having to do all the things that, you, that are inside of you. And may you never let anybody tell you that you're doing too much. Because the ones that tell you that you are doing too much is because they're not doing enough. And they know it. I love you all with all my heart. This is Lisa Marie Goodson of the Blackberry Beauty Transformative Academy. Ancient African wisdom for the Mana Sister. So I will do my best to be back tomorrow, maybe a little earlier. Because again, we're getting ready for our trip. And then Friday we're traveling, but I'll do a live stream somewhere. Maybe when we get back to the hotel. And then Saturday, I'm going to be live streaming me accepting the award. Okay, me accepting the award. That's what I'm going to be live streaming. And then Sunday, uh, maybe we'll do a quick live stream of me and the ladies together doing the intimate morning. And uh, we'll just keep it going. I don't know how long. I know Harriet Tumman didn't get tired, so I can't get tired either. I love you all with all my heart. Thank you, Katie. Peace and blessings. Ada, yes. Thank you to you, Ada. Love you too, Candace. Boom to you, Wazoro. Have a safe trip. Thank you, Jen. I love you too, G. Lisa. Awesome message for Tima. You got it. You got it too. Peace and blessings, Camille. Thank you for the congratulations. Safe travels. Thank you, Penny. Johanna, you got this, Lisa. Thank you so much. Candace, speak it into existence. Yes, Ashe. Peace and blessings.